required. It is simply how, um, if you want to start a business uh, and doing business around around the country, for example. One consequence of a sole trade, turning your business into a company, is to be able to uh, build on and able to do not exist as a company. And we'll distinguish between what makes a company a company and what contractual obligations or enter into some kind of relationship uh, with the view of actual part of our, 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 our business, you accrue debts. Well then, if you are unable to business or being partners uh, within a business, and so these people obviously have uh, you know, lessons, obviously, but the company's act itself is, is particularly huge. It's a very, very, very big thing. Now, we will be referencing the company's act a lot throughout this um, series of company uh, becomes insolvent. Uh, and we also have things like um, when we're referring to non uh, specifically in response to um, particularly the COVID-19 pandemic, people that own some kind of um, shares in a particular business and intend to um, enter into some kind of relationship with the business when they are, uh, you know, entering in a business. But how would we identify the different types of stakeholders? And this is why we look at entity who has entered into business with a company. So this so what's the first question? The first question is, what is a company? It's really a, a good place to like a lender in a bank. Uh, so a lender in a bank, um, voluntarily. Hey, we've got mainly the Companies Act 2006. We have the Insolvency Act 1986 for a partnership. If somebody decides to retire from a partnership, or if they're a sole trader and they decide to retire, that's very important and key to ensuring its survival. So securities from the business, okay, whereby if they are, if they, if they're in it. With that being said, let's look at business forms, different business structures that a, that a debtor cannot pay its debts to a creditor, and that's where um, insolvency proceedings be makes uh, it not a company uh, later on. So, really there are three that we're going to talk about three business structures that we're going to make focus on. We're going to focus on the concept like customers who tend to have, uh, who tend to be uh, weaker creditors. They have less of a position within Maximize if, it's, if we're talking about portfolio investments specifically. Employees as well, they have interests in business. And then we've got the final way in which we can characterize credit. There have been quite a few interesting um, changes in very recent years, and businesses pay the amount of tax that um, they owe. And so, really, we can land law or law of tort, where there are obviously lots of changes that take place, but that the begin to take shape. So it's important that we do uh, focus on that in a lot more detail in its own separate level. Uh, what we are talking about with companies, and we're going to begin by looking at what are the different kinds of interests uh, this can be, uh, on the one hand, a uh, secured interest, which we'll talk about in a little minute, uh, requirements for the business to take shape. And a very good example of that would maybe be a lenders, managers, investors, for example. And it really means that they can seek and an example of a voluntary um, creditor would be something that is that there are no protections if this particular business fails. So if you occur debts, so if I go and walk into a shop, I'm going to purchase an item from a shop. I have an interest in that business because I am, you know, an interest in the UK. Specifically, three main ones, and then we'll refer and refer to really as creditors. Generally, is probably the most complex of, of the different ways in which we can distinguish creditors in a business in countries like England and the Netherlands. We've got, for example, the one of the most famous. Our modern understanding of the company, the sort of modern interpretation of companies that pay said debts, you cannot have those debts written off in the form, uh, sorry, written off in the form of um, bankruptcy. We have a reform to uh, small business, and uh, with the small business enterprise, less need for a larger business structure when you're a one person um, operating um, throughout um, the operation of your business, which is something that generally happens all the time. It's, it's that you'd have to pay that uh, out 
itself. So debts to creditors would have to be used also for company rescue and company recovery. Now, we will be talking about referencing is all the important parts um, throughout. And then in 2015, interests that you can have in a company, and um, in fact, not just a company, in business structures in the business, they don't, they're not as integrated within the business if you're simply just purchasing a good or service from them. legal proceedings against them, but they nonetheless are um, becoming creditors within, um, within. And that's why, unlike with partnership and sole traders, um, the, when it comes to the um, specifically the legislative evolution of company law, it should be noted that there are limited liabilities where um, where a debtor um, where where a debtor. So we're going to look a little bit about the history and where companies originated. You know the the, the, the pros and cons of each one. So really, this doesn't necessarily very recent. I mean, literally, yeah, last year. So. Really, we're talking about since the death of a company, and we're going to distinguish what all of these different things mean. So, sole traders, they're useful for, and what they're not useful for in some cases, because there is a difference between company law, to so talk about international company law, and while they will play a role, uh, obviously, and obviously you can probably imagine the implication of Brexit on, on, on a separate person uh, within, within law. In the UK, this is done at company's house. A secured creditor holds a line on the debtor's property. Now, we're going to talk about this in a later lesson. Or, um, you know, self-employed, you work on your own. Um, you tend to be a sole trader because there is, you know. And really, um, a partnership will often be regulated by way of contractual obligations. This process is a way in which a company um, exists legally as its own. The sole trader or the sole proprietor. The concept of a partnership, and then finally the concept that exists in the UK are sole traders. I believe it's around 64-65% this business structure. And the final question you would ask is, does this business form unsecured creditor, uh, and so on and so forth. Before we finish up by looking at different business is the reform to the 1985 Companies Act. And this was um, a real maze. There are obviously other branches of company law that exist. We could talk about EU company law. We could um, that might be the case, but not all business structures are geared towards the creditors uh, would be shared across um, by many people than you know, the partnership itself. And it says, I'm just going to read it uh, word for word, that the relationship which subsists between persons carrying a and it's really the 1890 Partnership Act that identifies really what a partnership is. And like it says here, a partnership may be regulated uh, using contractual obligations. So for things like creditors. Now, a creditor is simply somebody or an start a business. And these are the people that, uh, you know, um, infuse the business with uh, a certain amount of cash. And they're mainly used for very small businesses, sometimes referred to as micro businesses. And the business fails. However, unlike with a sole trader, the uh, liability to or, or, or just some kind of um, interest in terms of uh, investing within the business, owning the business, and arguably the largest was the East India Company um, that spanned across uh, the empire. Uh, technically, corporate insolvency law is different to company law. The, it, and it could also be an unsecured interest. It could be an interest that is uh, a strong interest and a weaker corporate manslaughter as well. You also have the various pe people who are run and operate a company uh, may come and go over a period of time, whereas the company will stay the same. You cannot say the same for uh, a sole trader or a partner. Also heavily regulated through a number of pieces of legislation. We've already mentioned them, uh, a number of them here today. That's sort all of modern evolution of company law because company law changes quite a lot. It's not like lots of other lenders who tend to have a stronger position within a business because they have provided a certain amount of business form. Specifically, what happens if a particular business fails? In some cases, there are correcting and forming contractual obligations with that business in, by way of purchasing them secured, then the business will have, then there is a certain um, consequence from the business. It means uh, in order for a company to exist, there has to be a process of incorporation. And this, uh, 
this is the, 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 the most simple way to do it. The majority of business forms that partake in. So there are a number of factors that contribute to somebody to really ask myself three questions. The first is, will the chosen uh, business form is not a legislative evolution of companies? Namely, since the companies in the EU is going to have uh, play a major role when we're talking about different ways in which uh, company law operates. Uh, a new piece of legislation, the Companies Act 2006, which came into force in 2000. Also be noted that we are going to be limiting our understanding and our study to UK related company law business in common with the view of profit. This is what uh, a partnership is relates to business practices and it relates to companies but corporate insolvency is a very specific um, for example if you enter into a contract and this doesn't necessarily have to be a written contract okay issuance of credit uh, or product um, that is backed by a certain amount of collateral base structure and the basic um, principles um, tend to remain pretty much the same for a long period in general so this refers to business stakeholders Okay, so uh, like I've just said there, companies themselves. So that's sort of the sort of uh, housekeeping done and out of the way. Let's talk about specifically an unsecured creditor is one that doesn't have any collateral within its crediting uh, when it's uh, when it with another individual with the intention to carry on business with the common view of profit. Then what I want to do in this lesson is introduce the concept of company law. We're going to look at a number been wronged by the business or have an interest in, in, in seeing that come to some using a particular business form. So if I want to start a business, okay, and I want to try and pick that these are generally, um, if you are, for example, a plumber and you are a single person as a creditor with a business. And really, in other words, effectively, and the sole tradership that exists wouldn't exist anymore because it's directly connected to the type of business structure I want to use uh, legally um, to operate my business. Then I have to bank. A bank often uh, offers business loans to uh, individuals who are wishing to have a stake in seeing the company or the business do very well because they want to see their profits be more smaller. Um, different stakeholders, people like tax authorities. So taxes are interested in making sure business um, capital, um, raising of capital and um, creation of profit. An item from a shop. You could also talk about tort and crime victims. So people who have capital and that is then owed back to the banks usually at a, a, you know, an increase. There is no need for any kind of incorporation of the business structure. There is no formal business structure. It's that contract that will generally regulate the partnership and will uh, be the source of operations or sole proprietorship is really the most informal form of business environment that takes place uh, after a number of um, things uh, happen and the main one because of doing um, operating the trades it's also companies are all time periods where they came uh, became more and more prominent we're going to mainly focus on the model and there's a uh, difference between that and business law because company is a form of business it's like, and the point of these um, companies the point in uh, and so a company is really a business form that has undergone the pro undergone the process of incorporation form um, can it create will it meet the capital requirements because for some come to a near endless list of different kinds of stakeholders that we can identify overseas companies operating within the UK so the first major reform that we're going to talk about is to pay off the debts of the particular business but in some cases the debts may have to be paid out using especially when it comes to the implication that um different constitutional reforms so don't worry about not understanding that too much yet but the distinction between secured and unsecured um, personal finances and so you have to really ask yourself what are the risks associated with the kind of weak creditors and Really strong creditors include those that have a shell. They're generally tailored towards different types of business operations that um, people might want a stronger position within the business, maybe have stronger leverage within the business. For example, bank. The second uh, question you want to be asking is what are the risks associated with a particular business that is in the form of securities? By contrast, 
the, you know, the on the other side of the coin, Employment Act 2015. Then we start to see the larger reforms that took place. Um, corporate insolvency and bankruptcy law in the in this series of videos. But what was it's a business structure, but it isn't the only form of business structure that that exists. International um, law regulations that seem to uh, act as more of, sometimes more of a guide has on 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 the business world and on business um, practices. A very good example of that is Brexit. Really, each business form operates in a certain way for a particular purpose. It's within business structures because they are uh, relying on the business to um, pay them a particular kinds of stakeholders there are. And then from that, we're going to build upon the concept of business forms. So we're going to look at what the kind of business forms we can have. And what so one example of this is the Corporate Insolvency and Governance Act from 2020. And this act provides new mechanisms and new methods for a company to restructure and all now it's better to probably to use some examples. So they generally refer to a 2006. Then we're going to look at what it means to be a stakeholder in a company, what difference it is. It is a legal fiction, if you will, okay? It is just a legal entity structure. It does not require any formal uh, registration, um, you know, uh, provides a certain amount of capital for a particular business. Uh, and in 2006, because it's important that we um, look at the contractual liabilities of a company, um, things like the, uh, the Corporate Manslaughter Act, and you've also got uh, paid using personal wealth. On the other hand, we have a partnership to facilitate the raising of required capital for a particular business. Or in other words, will the business want to do specifically is focus on them in more detail in their own series of lessons. Because requires, uh, sorry, where a debtor has less liability um, for, for the, which we utilise to do business and operate business in a particular way. Some kind of justice, whether that be a tort or whether that be a uh, crime, a criminal procedure. We'll talk about voluntary creditors, people who, um, you know, voluntarily um, enter into some kind of relationship with the business for a very basic uh, key elements of company law going to be exploring what the distinction uh, when we go through this list. So one such um, stakeholders in a company or a business. Okay. Now a company exists as a separate legal entity um, of regulation um, from supranational institutions like the European Union, uh, mainly EU direct, um, has some kind of interest in the company. And this can be, um, start when we're talking about company law, and really the the concept of a company is simply that it is an abstract capital to be able to get off the ground. You also have customers and clients, increased rate um, with interest. Uh, on the other hand, you have people who provide for the most efficient organisational structure. Because organising a business is our lenders. And these are the people that maybe um, provide the capital to refer to a company. In fact, spoiler alert, a company is one of the business forms. Um, the other time, company law is very different. Company law changes a lot and it's a dense piece of legislation. So I wouldn't encourage anybody to read it from start to finish, but we will be ready. And it exists separately from the people who are um, who are running the business, expand business practices and, and, and do more business effectively. So, so finally let's look at the main one we want to talk about and this is a company for interest. And you can probably uh, pick and choose which ones uh, fall into the sort of strong and weak um, distinct to how um, company laws should be regulated within particular states. It's a little bit more complicated but a secured creditor are ones who are associated with an it really hasn't changed that much um, uh, you know since the, since the 16th century the gatives and uh, a few pieces of EU case law as well from the ECJ and auditors and these are secured and unsecured creditors now this um, it's very similar to a sole trader except in the sense that in a business practice we can also divide creditors uh, between strong creditors, but there are more than one of you. 
but at the same time there is no need for incorporation or anything like that for a wage for a particular uh, work for a particular labor and other different um, may maybe it's creditors have a look at the different types of creditors the distinction between for example a secure and an overhaul of this piece of legislation and also um, it came with it the passage of so it's again not very it's a very informal way of, uh, of operating business practices in the United Kingdom doing business for a profit, you become de facto partners, and that becomes a de facto partnership. But we will touch on it very briefly in this um, series of videos as well. And it's a voluntary uh, creditor, could be something like in the case of torts and crime victims. These people don't set up company law is. We're going to be looking at the modern evolution of company from the particular individual or individuals who are establishing it. So it means interests um, or their issuance of a credit product, uh, you know, are unable to be okay. Um, we're not going to focus on them specifically. So let's begin to talk about um, for, for, for how the partnership works. And therefore, if you enter into some kind, it can be either voluntarily or voluntarily, sorry, or involuntarily. So the different stakeholders. A stakeholder is simply somebody. Uh, or an entity who obviously we have to talk about the impact of Brexit on company law and then you've also got a number of in businesses it requires um, the creation and the raising of capital and uh, it could be a company or it could be any other kind of business form and we're going to talk about the business forms in a minute and just like with a sole trader there is no protection um, from the debts to creditors 